Hello and good day. Welcome back to our class. This is Teacher Oni de Guzman and our topic for today is histogram and OGIP. These are the graphs of frequency distribution for grade 7, quarter 4. Let's recall that a graph is a picture showing data relationships. Graphs provide the reader with a complete idea of the relationship, pattern, or trend even without reading the discussion. Because of this advantage, graphs are considered important tool in presenting data. For today, we'll talk about two types of graphs. So the first one is the histogram. Histogram, it is a graph that displays quantity data by using continuous vertical bars or bar graph of various heights to represent the frequencies of the classes. The nature of histogram is a bar graph with no spaces between. The other one is OGIP. It is a line graph where cumulative frequency of each class is plotted against the class boundary. An OGIP graph is a type of frequency polygon that shows cumulative frequencies. So let's talk about first the histograms. So they are used to summarize large data sets graphically and compare measurements to specifications. So let's consider example number one. So in our table, we have pair of shoes as well as the frequency. So we have the range here or the class interval one to three, we have five frequency, three to five, we have 11 frequencies, 5 to 7, 16, and 7 to 9, we have 8. Now, if we will construct the histogram, first, we will have our title. So the title is the collection of shoes. While on our x-axis, we will write the interval. So the interval is 1 to 3, 3 to 5, 5 to 7, 7 to 9. While on our y-axis, we have the frequency. Make sure that you will create a equal interval. So for me, I decided to create the interval by 2. So I start from 0, 2, until I reach out 18. So I start with 1 to 3. Based on the table, the frequency is 5. So obviously, I write here 5. Next, from 3 to 5, I have 11. Notice that there is no space between 1 to 3 and 3 to 5. Next, we have 5 to 7. I have 16. And finally, 7 to 9. I have 8. Take note that looking into our histogram, we can say that the range 5 to 7 has the highest frequency. Based on the table, it is 16. Okay, after 5 to 7 range, we have 3 to 5 as the second highest frequency, which is 11, followed by 7 to 9, which is equal to 8. And finally, the range 1 to 3 has the lowest frequency of 1 to Okay, of 5, rather. Let's have another example. So, number 2, create the histogram which represents the scores obtained by students in written tests. On my table, I have scores of students in written tests. I have the scores here in ranges from 0 to 10. I have 1 student, so get it. So, we can rewrite this one also as frequency. 10 to 20, I have 3. 20 to 30, I have 11. 30 to 40, I have 19, while 40 to 50, I have 16. The total is 50. Now, in order to create the histogram, so the first thing that I'll do is I'll write the title, which is scores in written tests. While on the x-axis, I'll write here the interval. So I have 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, and 40 to 50. While my y-axis is frequency. So I decided here to have the interval by 2s. Again, start with 0 until 20. So again, so I'll plot. From 0 to 10, I have only 1. Okay. Next, 10 to 20, I have 3. While 20 to 30, I have 11. So as you can see, there's no spaces in between. Okay, among the ranges from 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30. Next, let's move on to 30 to 40. I have here 19. And finally, I have 16 for the range 40 to 50. 
clearly, we can say that the range 30 to 40 has the highest frequency, which is equal to 19, while the lowest frequency is on the range 0 to 10. All right, so let's use the Excel in order to create the histogram. So we have this score of students in written tests, and we have this course and the number of students. So what you're going to do is simply highlight the numbers. So this cells, then click insert, look for the bar graph. So that is the column graph. So press, but okay, this is not yet a histogram. So what you're going to do is click the quick layout and look for the histogram. So there is the histogram. Now, so if we would like to edit this, so say for instance, if we would like to change the chart title, so we can write here as scores of students. So that is the title. While for our axis title, we can write here as the range or scores. While for the y-axis, we can write here as the frequencies or frequency. So there you have it as the histogram. Let's move on to the second type of graph for the frequency distribution, which is OE. So it is a line graph for cumulative frequency of each class is plotted against the class boundary. An OGIB is a type of frequency polygon that shows cumulative frequency. So let's consider this table. So we have here the weekly allowance as well as the plus or we have here the interval. Then we have the frequency. So notice that we have our class. We have from 0 to 20, we have two frequencies. From 20 to 40, we have 7. 40 to 60, we have 9. 60 to 80, we have 15. 80 to 100 is 7. Take note that, okay, in our interval, 0 to 10, 20 is our, okay, upper limit. From 20 to 40, we have 40 as upper limit. 40 to 60, we have upper limit as 60, 80 for 60 to 80, and 100 as the upper limit from the range 80 to 100. The next thing that we will consider is to consider the class mark. If we will recall to get the class mark is odd or get the average of 60 or I mean 0 and 20. So that is 0 plus 20 is equal to 20 divided by 2 is equal to 10. Similarly, 20 plus 40 is equal to 60 divided by 2 is equal to 30. So that is how we get our class mark. So if we will continue, we have the class marks. We have 50, 70, and 90 for the uh, classes or ranges 40 to 60, 60 to 80, and 80 to 100 respectively. Next, we will get now the less than cumulative. Now, how to get this? So the first one, the first frequency is copy the first frequency. Next, to get the succeeding cumulative frequency or less than cumulative frequency, so we have 2 plus 7, we have 9. 9 plus 9 equals 18. 18 plus 15 will give us 33, and 33 plus 7 is equal to 40. Notice that your total cumulative frequency is equal your total frequency. So again, so that is the less than cumulative frequency. Moving on to construct your, okay, OGI. So the first one is we will write the title. So the title is weekly allowance of 40 students. Okay. On our x-axis, we will write here the upper limit. Take note of the upper limit of 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. Next one. On our y-axis, we will have the cumulative frequency. Okay. And I'll write here the interval by 10 because that is more convenient for me. So the next one is to plot the points. So take note that the cumulative frequency is the y coordinates and the class mark is your x coordinate. It means that I have 10, 2. I have here 10, 2. So this is the point. 
Then I have 39. Okay. So I have 39. Then we have here 50, 18. There is the point. 70, 33. There's the point. And 90 is to 40. Then I'll connect the points. So this is now your OGI. Remember, this is, this is a line graph for cumulative frequency of each class is plotted against the class boundary. Let's use now the Excel in order to create the OGIP of weekly allowance of 40 students. So let's double check our data. So we have the class or the ranges. Then we have the given frequency. And take note that we have also the class mark and the cumulative frequency. Take note that the total frequency, the total is 40, which is the same as your final cumulative frequency. Now, in order to create the OGIP, so what you're going to do is to highlight the numbers, okay? So do not include the class mark and the name less than cumulative frequency, just the data. Go insert, then look for the scatter plot. And this is your scatter plot with smooth lines and markers. Press that. Then, let's move this one a little bit here. Let's adjust. So as you can see, there's a plus sign. Make sure click that for your as styles or titles as well as the data labels. Now, to edit that, okay, our title is, the say, weekly allowance next for our y-axis we can rewrite here as cumulative frequency while on our x-axis we can rewrite here as upper limit okay so there is the ogi of the weekly allowance of 40 students so that ends our lesson on frequency distribution using the histogram and the ogi again this is teacher on the guzman do not forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified about my new videos thank you